Roswell Flight Test Crew here. We're going to spend a couple of days looking at FLIR thermal imaging cameras that have different resolutions and different lenses mounted. We get a lot of questions about FLIR, so we wanted to do some testing to determine how different resolutions work in terms of their detection ranges of a human-shaped target and whether or not it's safe to fly with them, whether or not there's enough pixels there to see the details that you need to see in order to fly safe. You ready? Mm -hmm. Let's do it. In order to do a side-by-side -side comparison between different FLIR cameras, start by mounting them side-by-side. -side. So this is our current rig for testing the FLIRs. We used an old X-Pro Heli rig, attached three FLIR cameras to the front at different times. Um, in the back we have three little DVRs. We have a Voltrailer here, a power distribution, just an old USB hub, and the FLIRs run on five volts, so a two-cell battery is fine. The key difference between the three cameras we're testing today is the number of pixels on the thermal detector. The Tau 2160 is a low resolution camera and is the least expensive of the three. The Tau 2320 offers double the resolution but at a correspondingly higher price, and the Tau 2640 is a top of the line model with a price to match. For this test, we've selected a lens for each camera that provides a wide field of view. Something you might use if you're flying FPV. The Tau 2160 has a 7.5 millimeter lens, providing a 63 degree field of view. The Tau 2320 also has a 7.5 millimeter lens, which again delivers a 63 degree field of view. The Tau 2640 has a 9 millimeter lens mounted, which provides a 69 degree field of view. If we mounted a 9mm lens on the Tau 2160, we would only get a 52 degree field of view, and the same lens would limit our field of view to 48 degrees mounted on the Tau 2320. Both of those would be too narrow for comfortable FPV flying. The purpose behind this first test is to compare the detection ranges between different cameras for a human target. Alright, I don't remember when this happened exactly, but clearly I must have drawn the short straw at some point. Because I'm the guy who had to hike all the way out here to serve as the thermal target for this exercise. Uh, so when I get the word to Fireflies on our way, I've got to peel out of my nice warm parka here. And that's in spite of the fact it's pretty chilly. So that I can uh, be the best possible thermal target that I can be. I uh, hope these results are worth it. With Tekkenstein's rig mounted on the newest member of our fleet, RQ-CX-5 Firefly, it was time for the test to begin. Okay, I just saw a firefly pop up in the distance, so uh, she's heading my way. Here is a side-by-side -side comparison of all three cameras. All three of them are operating at 30 Hz, meaning they produce 30 frames of video per second. We'll just let this roll in real time, so you can decide how each camera performs for yourself. I'll be the solitary heat signature at the base of the tree line on the far side of the park. Now that you can clearly see me on all three cameras, let's talk about detection ranges. Along with an expert from FLIR, we determined that you could pick me out on both the 320 and the 640 at about 500 meters. But you couldn't see me on the 160 until the aircraft got to within about 400 meters. Alright, for this next series of tests, we've brought out Raven and we're going to try flying FPV with the different FLIR cameras to see what it's like to fly with different resolutions, different fields of view on the lens. So for our first flight here, we've got a FLIR Tau 2 324 mounted. That's 324 pixels of horizontal resolution at 30 frames per second and it's packing a 7.5 millimeter lens, so a good wide field of view. Let's see what that's like. I'm flying now with the 324, and as you can see, I'm flying over the circular structure, and it's, it's quite clear. I mean, there's no, there's, there's, isn't a problem to fly with this camera at all. 
Got a bit of wind today, so I'm moving forward against that. I'm moving up on this small circular object. I'm going to scrape off a bit of altitude. And as you can see, you can see those benches. You can see the uh, all the individual limbs on those trees. You can see the details on this trellis work. So yeah, the 320 with the 7.5 lens is uh, extremely flyable. This isn't a problem at all. Okay. So I've taken off the other camera, and this is a Tau 160, 160 uh, horizontal detectors, and it's also got a 7.5 millimeter lens. So we're going to compare the lower resolution camera with the one we just flew to see what the difference is. And you can definitely tell the difference. I mean, it's obvious you don't have nearly the resolution. This is the circular structure we were looking at in our previous flight with the 320 to give you uh, some sense of comparison. So as you can see, we're not getting nearly the uh, nearly the detail. As you, obviously, I'm maintaining the aircraft in the air so you can fly with it. So this would be serviceable, but I wouldn't... If I had a choice between this and uh, like a 320 or a 640, I'd definitely reach for the higher resolution camera. So for our final test, we're going to fly this camera, which is a Tau 2 640. It's the same camera we usually fly, except this one's got a 7.5 millimeter lens on it, which is wider than our lens and will afford us a full 90 degree field of view. This is our camera, also a Tau 2 640, but it's got a 9 millimeter lens on it, which has a 69 degree field of view. What we want to see with the 7.5 millimeter lens is it's so wide that you can't pick up those little details until you're right on top of something. Almost like you get when you're flying a GoPro on a wide angle setting. Well, this is actually quite nice with the wide angle lens. It's very good for situational awareness. I can see someone on the path right now walking their dog, but it's not as easy to discern as well as with their lens. I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm flying a lot closer to them. And it's... Honestly... Given the... Uh, it's almost identical to that of the GoPro. It's really strange. It's got a little more vertical resolution. But that's about it, though. As we back and forth, the, the path is exactly in the same spot for both cameras. Alright, so bottom line, where does that leave us? Which camera's right for you? Well, if you've got all the money in the world, go ahead and get the 640. It's got the highest resolution, it's going to give you the best results under all circumstances. However, it's a little over 10 grand, so be prepared to shell out for that. For many of you, I suspect that the 320 is going to end up being a workhorse. It costs about 6 grand less than the 640, at just a little over $4,000, and as you can see in our testing, it works very nearly as well. The detection range is basically the same, and it gives you plenty of detail to fly by. If you're scraping together every single penny, and your mission requires a thermal imaging capacity, go ahead and get the 160. It sells for a little over 3,000 bucks. However, if it were me, I'd go ahead and save up the extra thousand bucks and get the 320. It's just that much better. All right. So we hope that's helpful to you in finding a FLIR thermal imaging camera that's appropriate for your application. I well, hope you enjoy watching. See you next time. Didn't we start with six of those? No, five. Mm -hmm. All right. Anyway, fly safe. <laughs>